For thousands of years, the immortal principality of Ustalov has labored beneath the legacy of its dark past. Within the shelter of its mist-shrouded hills and decaying, decadent cities, things that have no right to live stalk the night. And superstitious residents lock their doors tight against the howls and scratchings that summon them forth. Vampires, werewolves, undead monstrosities, and stranger things make their homes here. And even those fools who ignore such threats tremble at the thought of the whispering tyrant. The nation's former conqueror who even now shifts restlessly beneath his prison tower at Gallowspire. Though most of Ustalov's citizens are ordinary men and women, canny urban merchants or fallen nobles, coasting on their last shreds of wealth and reputation, no one here dares peer too far into the shadows for fear of what is peering back. Welcome, travelers. We are Vorpal Tales, and we perform terrifying tales and awesome adventures every day of the week, most days, twice a day. There are endless archives of occult secrets and lost knowledge at our website, VorpalTales.com, where you can see our calendar, recaps of previous shows, Links to our archives, social media, Patreon, and Ko-Fi. Visit it to unearth ancient horrors. Be sure to follow on Twitch, and then plunder the YouTube archives for artifacts of power at youtube.com slash c slash tales. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell while you visit so you can be alerted of new adventures. Special thanks to Roll20 for our virtual gaming space, and to Ghost Stories Incorporated, Darren Curtis Music, and Coag Music for some of the awesome tunes gracing our ears in this tale. Heroes of Horror, tell us who you are, but not about your characters yet. Hey everybody, it's me, Ambrose. You can find me all over the internet as Am Changeling, because it me, Am Changeling. And my pronouns are he or they. And I am Jay through Billion, otherwise known as John, and I will be uh, playing Ramir Helmuth tonight. Uh, hi, I'm Savannah. You can find me online at Miss Miss Emo Fox, and I'll be creating a character tonight, along with everybody else. Oh, Amber's not here, so it's Amber's my turn. Uh, uh, I am Dwayne. You guys can find me on the internet at Made of Kimchi, and tonight I will be playing a character as well. Hi, I am Rosie, regular size mom, and you'll find out what I'm doing wearing a beard and a scar later. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so most of you have either partially or completely built your characters, so we're going to round robin this. We're going to start with Savannah. Tell us your ancestry, or at least what it appears to be. However, any of you want to answer this is fine. Uh, my ancestry is human. Your class? Uh, Oracle. Tell us a little bit about that. If you don't have backstory for those coming up, we'll develop it when I get to you. Uh, hold on. Where'd it go? Uh... So... God, why do I have to go first? Um... Blame the overlay. <clears throat> uh... It's my fault. Yeah, it is your fault. <clears throat> uh, so, Oracle? You wanna... We want, we wanna know more about Oracle? Uh... We want to know more about the part of your backstory you're willing to divulge. Why are you here, and why are you an oracle? Uh, so, uh, she was born this way. Uh, <laughs> uh, in terms of being an oracle, uh, she was uh, born the night of a great storm, uh, and there were uh, beans and objects filled with power. Um, on that night, uh, her little b infant babiness being one of them. Um, so she gets her powers um, from the cosmos. Uh, she doesn't really follow a particular deity. Uh, until recently, uh, she uh, lived uh, and uh, had a business in a uh, farming community um, offering like aid um little trinkets um fortune telling and like natural remedies uh to the locals uh until she decided she wanted to go out on her own uh she still 
practices uh, any chance she gets, uh, offering aid and um, oracleness uh, to people on her way. Uh, her moniker? Is that the right word for it? I'm not sure. It is now. Her, uh, her name? Uh, besides her, like, actual, like, first name, uh, she goes by the Blue Heron. Um, she can always be found wearing, like, whites and blues, and how she keeps it so clean, nobody knows. But she does. Much like her hair. Excellent. And, uh, tell the people who might not know that are new to Pathfinder what an oracle does in very generic terms in Pathfinder. What kind of class is it? Ah, in very generic terms, uh, an oracle is a divine caster of sorts. Uh, she can do a lot of things that, like, a cleric can do. Uh, but she also, uh, oracle, the one, like, downside to an oracle is that they have a curse for being so darn cute. Um, and depending on <laughs> what type of mystery you choose when you're building your oracle, uh, different things affect uh, you. Uh, like, for instance, uh, because uh, I choose to have my powers from, like, the cosmos instead of, like, a couple of other different mysteries, um, I am constantly pulled to the sky. So I levitate and, like, things like that. And I have problems staying on the ground. Not sneaky at all. I'm not sneaky at all. My hair floats. My gown wafts in the non-existent wind. Um, and I kind of just like tippy-toe off the ground. Excellent. Well, that's it for round one. We'll come back to you. <laughs> Ambrose. Tell us about Bond. Ambrose Bond. <laughs> <laughs> What's your apparent ancestry and your class? Woman! Uh, class is rogue. I'm playing my first full rogue for the kind first time. Rogue. Rogue, rogue. Wowie. Um, You're almost as good as I am. <laughs> What's your uh, racket? My. It's on your sheet. Racket. Racket! Oh, charlatan. What is it you do? Your character. How do you make your way in the world? Oh! Oh. Well, I mean, if I told them, I'd have to kill them. Get a lot of contracts? From shady government organizations, probably? Eh, I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. I just deliver things. Probably have a reputation for working for different houses against each other, whoever pays the best. Oh, maybe. 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 What's your character's actual first name? Nikolai! And, uh, Love it. what's your work name? Oh, you know, I didn't think about that. Let's make up a cool one. Help them out, players, if you want. <laughs> Just don't say the uh... jackal. That's so taken and used a million times. Damn it. How about McStabber uh, Incorporated? Except, <laughs> except not that kind that of one, rogue. Is that one taken as well? Um, not that kind of rogue, people. Good at, no, good at Alice sneaky, I, yes, I but will not. Not a, not a stabber rogue. <laughs> um, see, anytime I think of... I don't know. I have, like, the lies of Locke Lamora stuck in my head, so don't mind me over here. It's a very good book. Is. It's a oh. very, very good book series um, about a gentleman thief. Oh, I don't really know if he's a gentleman, per se. So I just googled stealthy animals, and legit, the first one that showed up is the Black Heron, which is amusing in comparison <laughs> to the Blue Heron. But uh, also, the next one is a fish, which I don't what? think works for um, you. Um, <laughs> the fish. We'll Actually, see which which heron comes out on top. I, I have, are I you like one. a thief, thief, or yeah. or just I, like a confident? Okay, so this, this is a spy. It's definitely a spy build. 
He can do rogue stuff, but it's not a trap disarmer. Uh, However, I've got an idea for you, Ambrose, while Dwayne looks. Hmm. Oh, no, I, I, I have one. I just say, like, like shifty eye. You're known as Ook. That's much better than what, than how, what I was going to say. Set, 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 check your Discord. <laughs> check your Discord. <laughs> hmm. Is that how you pronounce it? it just sounds. I have no idea. You tell me. I don't know. I don't know either. Let's find out. Uh. I think it is. I think it's pronounceable. Yeah, it's like it is. Okay. All right. Do you want your first name on the overlay or that? first name. Okay. Are you from here or did you I lost my uh, thought. Did you uh, emigrate here later? I I can seem like a native of Ustalav. Okay. Seem like. Good wording. I approve. What do you want to tell them about yourself? The audience and the players. Uh, let's see. I am actually quite a family man. I, uh, have family. <laughs> you know, the the kind that has a mom and a, and a dad and some siblings. I haven't seen them in a long time. I mean, they might all be dead for all I know. But I don't have anything to do with that. Okay. I'm just That's kidding. They know. live. I'm just kidding. They live in a forest not too far away, and they're really great. They make the best stew. You sound like that kid that tries to one up everybody at a party. Yeah, I got parents too. <laughs> <laughs> and and brothers the... and sisters and stuff. That is the saddest okay. like one up I've ever heard. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, I have a family, too. Yeah, well, um, I have a mom and a dad. Oh, no, Ni God. Nikolai has a, has a very large family, actually. Um, he just hasn't seen them in a very long time. Okay. Anything else you want them to know? Hmm. Please, please, don't wear strong perfumes. I am okay. covered in pulpery. <laughs> God. <laughs> okay. Wait. <laughs> uh, I I too am a human. I am a monk. <laughs> I am human. Look, I walk like human. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay. sure you're not a Ferengi? I, I am sure. Reminds me of the robots from last night's movie. <laughs> That's why I said it, yes. Uh, tell us about whatever you want to tell us about your ancestry and class and your history in Ustalov. So, for those who don't know, a monk is a, you know, one whose strength flows from their fists, their mind and their spirit, all about using uh, unarmed attacks and running around the battlefield uh, without armor. I will be focusing mainly on uh, the key build of a monk, trying to center myself and use my key to pummel my opponents. Uh, as far as the character themselves, uh, he is from Ustalov. Uh, however, he was given as a child to a, uh, a newly founded uh, monastery on the banks of Lake uh, Encarthen. It was founded by a uh, monk followers of Ferris Mon, the Lady of Graves. Cool. We, we look to her teachings to seek enlightenment to the, uh, and, you know, 
better ourselves and reach peak performance because uh, infinity is everything and we wish to reach the infinity spire at some point in, during our enlightenment. Uh, but now I am traveling the lands, uh, further developing my uh, martial skills, passing the word of the lady on to others. That's about it. Okay. Now I realize I need to grab something before we can talk about John's character. Now. What would your first name be, Duane? Oh, yeah. Uh, I am Tiet. Some call me the Dawn Gift, as I was born on a red dawn morning. No hyphen like in your Zoom? No hyphen. I have a hyphen? No, some of that name could, though. Oh. All right. John, tell us about your apparent ancestry and class. We don't talk about your god yet. No, don't talk about my god yet. Yeah, you have to go through the approved list, but yes, did you? Oh, 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 okay. Um, yeah, so my ancestry is also the Hewons. Um, and I am a cleric. And yeah, I do lots of cleric things. I cast heals and I cast the harms. And, and, and I do all that stuff. Um, tell us a little bit about your backstory in Ustalov. If you don't have one, we'll make it up while I crack this open. I really want that book. Okay, uh, that was a shiny moment. Okay, uh, yeah, so in Ustalov, he is... He's a, he's a relative newcomer to Ustalov. Um, he has been traveling for a while now. And he's just getting this is... he he is trying to acquire information and he wants to uh, he just wants to travel around and 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 see the world basically uh, and and understand and get to know what things are like understanding is his prime motivating factor i would say like okay. he wants he wants to learn he is a very curious person and he has been uh, uh, uh so what are my approved list of gods here we go abadar is allowed Mm -hmm. Master of the First Vault, Lawful Good, God of Cities, Law, Merchants, and Wealth. I heard Waffle Good. Neutral. Close. Also no, no, neutral. I heard Waffle. Waffle. It is definitely Waffle Neutral. Thank you. Uh, Asmodeus, the Prince of Darkness, Contracts, Pride, Tyranny, and uh, other assorted bad things. Mm -hmm. Calistria, the Savory Sting. Goddess of lust, revenge, and trickery. Chaotic neutral. Aristil, old dead eye, lawful good, a god of family, harm, farming, hunting, and trade. Depending on if you're from certain regions of Ustalav, like the Shield Wall. Iomade, the Inheritor, a lawful good, goddess of honor, justice, rulership, and valor. Duane, for you, Irori is available if you choose a god. But not anybody else. Irori only? <sighs> no, an additional choice that no one else gets. That oh. Because of what it represents. Nethys, the all-seeing eye, John, god of magic probably only really applies if that's the kind of cleric you want to be. Uh, you're really going dark. Norgorber is worshipped in this region. 
Father Skin saw the Grey Master, the Reaper of Reputation, the neutral evil god of greed, murder, poison, and secrets. Although that might be more appropriate to Nikolai. Of course, most widely worshipped in Usulav, Phrasma, the Lady of Graves. Birth, death, fate, prophecy, and time. It's basically the Raven Queen, so if you know me, that's how you get me to like a character. <laughs> yeah, it's fair. Also, if you're from Shield Wall, Saren Ray, the Dawnflower, healing, honesty, redemption in the sun. Torag is available for Rosie. Uh, Zon Kuthan, again, if you're going evil, the Midnight Lord, God of Darkness, Envy, Loss, and Pain. Widely worshipped here. Uh, from the very south region, Besmara, the Pirate Queen. Piracy, Sea Monsters, Strife. Uh, none of you in that one, even though it exists, so we're skipping it. Uh, skipping ones that wouldn't really appropriate to the kind of rogue I saw you make, John, so hold on. Nocticula, the Redeemer Queen, Artist, Exiles, and Midnight. Sivana, the Seventh Veil, Illusions, Mysteries, Reflections, and Secrets. And if none of those have caught your attention yet, there's some weirder ones. I mean, I'm always down for weirder. A few of them did, though. Uh, Demon Lords, if that's how you want to go. <laughs> Not going to stop there unless you decide that, though. There are the Horsemen, the Apocalypse, uh, Apollyon, Charon, Zuriel, and Tromerixian. There are the Great Old Ones, very few of which would be available to you, but Azathoth and, uh, and Yogg-Sothoth would be. The rest are all too evil. Yeah, that's really it. The rest are too uh, far away from true gods for the campaign. Okay. Um, uh, so I'm kind of waffling between... Uh, Phrasma and Nethys. Uh, Nethys, because of, like his, the core concept of him is just information and magic, and he, those are things that are important to him. Um, and then Phrasma, because of like uh, obviously like life and death and balance, and that's where like God, okay. I can't think today. I apologize. Okay. So is there, do you think there is a preferred, or do I just pick one? You could always join me on the, the pilgrimage to the Infinite Spire. And for Asma? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be cool. Does, uh, Asma, would Dwayne's, yeah. would Dwayne's character get a bonus for converting you or anything like that? Because I know that happens in Dungeon Crawl Classic. I don't know. I'm not no, answering let's... that because you'd have to find out the hard way through roleplay. Let's just do Frasma. <laughs> I, I like that idea. All right. I have, you have the idea, info in front not. of you. Or know where to get I... it. I know where to get it. How do you spell Phrasma? P H A R A S M A. Oh, thank you. Okay. Now, whilst John records that, we're going to circle back around to the rest of you who may have an interest in deities. No debt. You don't really need to worry about that unless you specifically want one. I do not, because Savannah does not. <laughs> yep. And an oracle uh, gets powered more from a concept than a god, anyways. Uh, Ambrose, let's find appropriate things. Where is it? 
Kato on the Nethys 2e site I gave you a bajillion links for. Or just Googling Pathfinder. Look up the Green Mother. Ragadan, which is R A G A D A H N. The Lantern King. Ashava. That one might entice you especially. A-S-H-A-V-A. -A -A. Sean would be so happy this game has one called the Black Butterfly. Yeah, those would be the primary ones for you. Especially the last one, I think. I'm lurking at him. And, John, what do you want your first name to be on the overlay? Uh, Ramir. Spell it, please. R E M E I R. And if you would, put that in Zoom so people know. And that takes us, last but not least, to Rosie. Tell us about your actual ancestry, not apparent, because it's obvious in your case. And then your class, and then your life here in Ustalov. Uh, Yes, my character is a dwarf. And they own a bar called the... Well, the, the name's a little debatable. It's got a sign out front with a duck that looks like it's walking and losing its balance with its wings out. Uh, so some people call it the dancing duck, some people call it the tipsy duck. Uh, but they're here because I've got the best beer in town. Apparently humans can't brew beer for shit, so that's their problem. <laughs> uh, and I'm particularly in this region because I like to travel and find new flavors to put in alcohol. All right. And schist. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's a thing that's happening. Got it. <laughs> totally. I don't know where dwarves are normally from in Pathfinder. Is there a region uh, or anything like that? For story purposes, put Cheliac. C H E L I I C H E L I A X. Okay. All right. Moving back to Duane a little. Tell us more about your monk. What's your uh, subclass kit? I forget what they're called for monks. Way. What's your way? I don't get a way yet. At level three? I do not. They don't have ways in uh You in should Pathfinder have like a sub kit of some kind though. No. Interesting. It's all based off of your monk skills. So tell us about that, which you want people to know and not be surprised. Surprise. <laughs> uh so I will be a uh like I said, a key monk. Uh, working oh, on yeah. centering That's what I meant by yeah. archetype, sorry. Yeah. So like I said in the chat, I'll be prioritizing um wisdom index versus strength and using my uh key focus points for extra damage versus strength. I took what are some cool things I did? So when I created my character, humans get a straight 10 all the way down. However, I took a flaw to give me an extra bonus in another way. About that. Uh, 
I will be rebalancing ability scores when we're done, but yeah, keep going for now because some of you rolled and I didn't tell you all to. Uh, what? Yeah, that's my bad. Carry on though. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so yeah, I, I did take a flaw in charisma. Not very good with people, uh, but we'll see. That may get better. Uh, I took the versatile heritage to give me a feat right off the bat, and I took toughness, it's a general feat, give me a little bit extra hit points, and reduce the DC of recoveries. And then as a human, I was able to take natural ambition, which gives me another first level class feat. So I got a buttload of class feats, uh, just starting like right off the bat on first level. I've got Fury of Blows, Power Fist, and Tiger Stance. So Tiger Stance gives me the ability to use my fists like claws. And slash at people, dealing more damage than I normally would. Uh, I also gain a Quick Jump. Another skill feat I took was Titan Wrestler, so I can grapple and maneuver around larger creatures hopefully help out the team because i will be using my hands all the time i do not have a weapon i have no armor however my armor class is 21 <laughs> with yeah, no armor <laughs> okay let's hear about rosie's fighter whatever you want to share like mechanically what cool things do you have Oh. Um, da -da 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 -da. Let's see. Well, just from being a fighter, I get attack of opportunity. Apparently, that's, I'm the only person that can do that, which is kind of cool. Uh, I also took sudden charge and British shove. I love the idea of just being able to run in and knock something over or beat the crap out of it, which is great because I also have Titan Wrestler uh, and Fleetness and Unburdened Iron all to counter the fact that I wear armor as a fighter. So hopefully that works the way I expect it to. That's it. Same for you, John. Squishy caster, warrior cleric, what'd you do? Uh, I went warrior cleric. Oh. I enjoy hitting things hard and uh, smiting. So I'll be doing a lot of smiting. Are we going to have a competition? Oh, no, no, no. You, you can't cast smite. That's just me. Sorry. What's your oh. healing potential like since you're the cleric? Uh, I took holy, or I took uh, healing hands, and I took heal, so it's gonna be pretty good. Do you skill the medicine? I did not. Okay, that doesn't matter. That's good. Yeah, no, it's medicine seemed a bit redundant because heal is just fantastic, and I get a ton of those a day. Yeah. The burst heal is the best thing about this game. Uh, it's insane. Premier appears human, Lupine Vendetta. So does Odette, Nikolai, and Tiet. More about that in a minute. The only one that doesn't appear human is Schist. <laughs> that name every time. Okay. Did anyone skill into medicine? This will affect how many healing potions I throw at you. Yes. Okay, what about battle medicine specifically? As a skill feat? No. Okay. Wait, did I take medicine? Yes, I did. Yeah, I'm trained. I don't know what counts as good in medicine, but you gave me a four. Okay. That's That's default. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was just like, wait a minute. Nope. <laughs> Uh, Nikolai 
Tell us what you're willing to tell us about your rogue. Cool powers, abilities, whatever. What? That's for Ambrose. Oh, okay. Wait, what? Nikolai. <laughs> you are Nikolai. <laughs> Tell us about your rogue, whatever you want people to know about your cool powers and abilities and whatnot, skills. Oh, oh, uh, Or nothing so, if you don't want them to know. No, I'll let them know. Um, so Nikolai, by the way, I did pick a deity, technically too. Um. You can also discuss that if you want or leave it a surprise. Yeah, oh, uh, there's nothing really to, anyway. So Ashava is his family's deity but uh his teacher encouraged him to follow the green mother and let's see i have a dex of 20 wisdom of 18 charisma of 18 and the rest are 14. i said um, Dwayne. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on, Nikolai. Don't worry about it. I. Mm, oh, Dwayne went mm. with default ability score array, and that doesn't put you anywhere near the numbers most of the rest of you have. Mm, let's see. What else? Uh, I have an AC of 17. Hit points of 38. Probably more like skill feats, class feats. Oh. Okay. Where are those? At? Yes. Tell us about your feet. You have a handy tech document mm -hmm. with those. Oh, I do. Okay. Where? That I don't know. No, I don't. It's in your Discord. It is? Mm -hmm. I don't know where it is. Cannot find. Has well, maybe the lords and ladies of fate could help you look for it. There you go. <laughs> You never gave me that. I copy pasted the content. That's that big list of stuff. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for the raid. <gasps> Thank you. Hello. Hello. Oh, that was adorable. Hello. Um. Oh. Oh, okay. I see. Um. I can smell things up to 30 feet. Um, background is charlatan. Rogue is the thing that I do. Uh, my rogue feats are plant evidence and mobility. Um, my <clears throat> racket is scoundrel. I have plus two in lore skills. Um, my skill feats are Bon Mot. What? 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 <laughs> what does that even mean? It's got a handy link with it. I don't. <sighs> Basically, you can make a witty retort and cause people to lose focus. It's like a faint with your mouth. <laughs> uh, charming liar. Discreet inquiry. Group impression. Kenny Acumen. And then I have a sneak attack of plus 2d6. Okay. The end. Last but not least, Odette, anything you're willing to share? That would be do you do ballet? What? I <laughs> called on you, but I used your character name, which nobody knows their character names yet, so it's fine. <laughs> nope. I was just like, mm, I thought you were still talking to Ambrose. Nope. Oh, tell us whatever you want about your cool powers and skills, or not. Um, Odette is a spellcaster. Um, I'll, I'll talk about my... Uh, <laughs> Feet, I guess. Uh, so I, I did pick the background of uh, fortune teller. So I am good at um, 
identifying weird things. So I have oddity identification as a feat. I also have experienced professional um, as a feat. Uh, so that way I don't, I, it's very rare for me to lose money when I earn income. Um, I also, uh, cause uh, I don't like not being good at things. I picked up untrained improvisation. So I always have at least like a plus one in things. Uh, and then for my Oracle feats, I um, picked up Domain Achman. Uh So Close that way enough. I, yeah. <clears throat> Don't ask me to pronounce things, it'll end poorly. Uh, so I picked up, uh, through my mystery, I picked up a moon domain spell through that. Um, and then, let's see here. Uh, la 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 la. <laughs> Things are hard, okay? I should have like wrote a freaking summary. <laughs> um, yeah, cause I'm just, I mean, I'm nothing special. I, I'm a tricked out, pimped out sorcerer with a curse uh, essentially as an Oracle. So um, I throw spells and I know things. Uh, and she speaks many languages because yes. my int is stupid high. Yes. Um, so I, in addition to the common tongue, I know five additional languages. Go ahead and list them because we should balance those between all of you anyways. You're okay. a cunning linguist. I am a cunning linguist. Anyway, uh, Shadow Tongue, Sylvan, Aklo, Celestial, and Hon, Honla? I yes. I don't know how to pronounce. Yes. yes. Um... Okay. Tiet, what are yours? That would be Dwayne. Dwayne. I am still trying to figure out my third. Uh, I do know common, uh, Varesian, and I don't know what the third one is yet. Probably somewhere, uh, something to the area where I grew up, somewhere around, uh, somewhere in Avistan. I don't know. Okay. Ramir. Two things from you. Refresh me on what your domain is again. If you took one yet. Uh, my domain? Mm -hmm. uh, time. Thank you. And languages? Uh, just common right now. He's not a very smart individual. And Schist. Schist speaks Dorvan common... Uh, where'd it go? Oh, I have them written down. Gnomish and uh, Jotun. Okay. So, for those of you who still have a couple languages to pick, which includes Tiet and Nikolai, at least, and Amber next week, things that are unchosen. Draconic, you'll probably get that from Amber, though. She's a witch. Uh, I didn't hear Elvin. Halfling, oh. orcish, goblin won't be necessary. Thank you, Elvin. Okay, Abyssal, Aquan, Orin, Ignan, Terran, if anyone cares about elemental languages. I was thinking of taking Terran. Okay. Celestial, Noel, probably won't need Noel. Infernal. Yeah, that's it. What? Everything else I is mean, covered. Since you know my character really well, what would he have been more exposed to? From the fun secret backstory you sent me, uh, Abyssal. Really? Yeah. Okay. So, instead of Elvin, or You have two left, so take them both. Okay. I only gave you like a couple of your pile. Yeah, you gave me common and undercommon. Yeah. And you had four total, so you can take them both. <laughs> Okay, cool. Thank you. Who rolled? <laughs> Might have been me. Oops. <laughs> all right, yeah, Dwayne, it was me. Taryn and or one of the others that was not chosen is all yours, or you can have some overlap. It doesn't matter. I already have my three. Okay. 
alignment time, starting with Schist. I <laughs> have not chosen alignment in a game in so long. Fuck. Oh, these are these uh, are for spell effects. You play your character the way that you think you should, but click, pick the closest thing to how you're going to play. I wrote something down, and it doesn't feel like what I meant to do. I okay. think. Evil. Uh, I wrote. I, no, I wrote down lawful good, but I thought I was going to go like lawful neutral or neutral good. I don't okay. think I want to be all the way up in that corner. So these are guidelines too for magic because it matters in Pathfinder. I'm not going to make you stick to the little paragraph in the book. Okay. So. So he's, he's somewhere in that like upper left-hand quadrant. Okay. Ramir. Anything is on the table except chaotic evil. We have a uh, table? I have to, as a cleric though, I have to kind of you don't have to match your deity, but you have to be within one step, so one of the two aspects. And I forget what Phrasma is, so... Lawful neutral. Yeah, so you need to be neutral good. It actually has it on the... Uh... Neutral good, uh, true neutral, lawful neutral, lawful evil, or lawful good. I'll just be true neutral. Okay. Tiet. I am neutral good. Nikolai. Does chaotic neutral seem appropriate for my character? Yes. Okay. Odette. I'm good something. Okay. You could be waffle good. I, I'm a waffle. Mm-hmm. Um... I think that pretty much covers everything. Uh, the two divine casters, though, Odette, yes. you probably tell Ramir what spells you have, so he knows he doesn't um, have to spend his slots mm. on those, since he gets access to the whole list. Um, some of these might not uh, apply to you because they're just for me. Ah, uh, but uh, I have dancing lights, disrupt undead, stabilize. Forbidding ward, haunting him, shield, protection, sanctuary, thoughtful gift, augury, and inner radiance torrent. Okay, sounds good. Because will... my other spells you wouldn't get anyway, because they're oracle stuff. Roger that. I will construct a list. Okay. Gear. Decide as I come around to you um, if you want to focus on weapons, armor, or other, or the way your gear is going to lean. We're going to start with schist. Can't stop saying it now. It's your fault, Ambrose. It It is very much Ambrose's fault. I was going to go with something more Icelandic and... A bit nicer less likely to trip people up <laughs> uh well i'm gonna start off with a uh weapons because i know that based on some of the feats i took that i need something that's a two-hander uh so i was considering a great axe so you want to lean heavily towards the weapons yes okay in that case you can have chain mail red Really? Yep. I thought I could only... Level one. Okay. No, I I thought I had access to that sort of thing, but physically, I'm not, like, I, I can't. I don't know that that matters. Let me check. Oh, okay. I mean, you're the storyteller. Uh, no. Uh, because it's got the flexible quality, you're okay. It does have the noisy tag, though. Meaning that okay. you take a penalty to stealth checks. All right. So you said chainmail? Yep. Bad. What's your strength? Uh, base fourteen. Can't wear it. That's what I thought. Yeah, you can have it. I don't care about that. <laughs> Oh, thank you. 14 strength is like, chainmail's not that heavy. <laughs> uh, 
I would I would restrict though the actual restrictions for half plate, full plate, scale mail. Anything chain mail and lower to me is just studded leather, but made out of the, the way I generally scale play mail my... is actually lower. I know scale mail is You're... lower, but the the way I tend to play my fighters is I generally like to make them rush in, so I generally don't go with something like full plate or anything like that. Yeah. Okay, you can have your choice of axe or two of them if they're light finesse. Uh. But only one gets ruins, and it's going to have some fun ruins. Okay. I'm trying to find that portion. Uh, oh, same. This link is for all of you. Don't worry about the category, but if you open it and then scroll up, you can see the entire gear list. So if I give you something, oh, thank you can you. click it. Yeah, so I had been thinking of a uh, of a great app. Okay, this is the list of runes. Yeah, I'll be giving you the runes, but if you scroll up, okay. the, if you scroll to the top, there's a weapons button you can click. Uh, so, like I said, I think it does need to be a two-hander, uh, and that works perfectly well for me with, I think it's Brutus Shove. Uh, oh, I do love a morning star. I don't know if that's a two-hander, though. While you're waiting for your turn, by the way, you all can look at adventuring gear purchase up to 250 gold worth of whatever. Hey! Yeah. And don't, like, count out your rations or anything, just gear. Jesus, 250. Okay. I don't even know what to spend that on. 250 on just adventuring gear? I mean, it won't take long once you scroll down to the big stuff, because I'm also including uh, transportation here if you want rides besides your feet. So, a horse is in there. Uh, I am gonna stick with the great axe and just okay. Just go classic. And if you don't spend it all, that's just your starting cash, whatever's left. And your weapon and armor will not subtract from this. Make sure you look class-based, especially you, Ambrose, thief stuff. You don't specialize in thief stuff, but you can still do it. Okay. Picking locks without lock picks not a good idea. Um. Okay. Chest. You get a rune of striking, a rune of weapon potency. You want to be loud? Yeah, I'm a dwarf. And a thundering <laughs> rune. an heirloom make up the story you want and give it a name that's a lot of roots for those who don't know in pathfinder if you have the crafting skill and you roll well especially if you have like an arcana lore talent or i mean skilled training you can actually remove the rune from one piece of equipment and put it on another so it's not a magic item it's a regular item with runes and runes can be moved very handy that's very handy that way if I give you a short sword and you use axes, just take the runes off it and put them on your axe. <laughs> okay. And then your adventuring gear. Room here. Weapon armor or other. Weapon armor or other. Or do you, you want know to I had... in for your magic? I had ten minutes to think about this. <laughs> <laughs> now that you get to me. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna be smiting, so we're just gonna go. We're just gonna continue down that vein. Okay. Just... What's your strength? Eighteen. Yeah. Okay. You can have a uh, breastplate. 
Yeah, buddy. Wait, no, half plate. Sorry, looking at the wrong one. Now, remember with your stuff, it may be a little bit more than other people are getting, but it's not actually yours. So you have to treat it as such. It actually is the property of the church who have loaned it to you to spread the word into the world and to defend them and their interests. Fair. Uh, Weapon-wise, pick your weapon of choice first, and then we'll ruin it up. Um, you know what? I really want to be this cleric that's running around with a, a maul. Just a two-handed warhammer. Okay. Um. Your runes. Yeah, let's do that. Your runes using the rune link in Discord are uh, weapon potency. Plus one. Uh, wow. Striking. Here, what's the second one I gave you, Rosie? I don't want to mess that up. Uh, you gave me a rune of striking, a yeah. rune of weapon potency, and thundering. You are striking, John, weapon potency, and holy. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, the holy one is definitely property of the church. So whatever you name it, it is of your goddess, or your goddess's name is somehow in the, the name of the weapon. I can deal with that. Give me your rune. Name your weapon after the church. Okay. No, not after the church, after the goddess. Or the goddess, like yeah. Like Phrasma's Thunder or Wrath of Phrasma, some variation that has Phrasma in it. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. Tiet, where are we leaning? Uh, well, not armor, not obviously. Armor, yeah. Magic item or weapon? Uh... I guess a magic item. Okay. Take two monk weapons of your choice. You can't have armor. And then... Or we'll fang talismans because they get used up. Say that again. What? Four wolf fang talismans. They do th they do extra things when you trip, which is a big monk gimmick. Should always be tripping fools. <laughs> and a lifting belt. Which improves your athletics, which also improves tripping. <laughs> um, Nikolai, where are we leaning? Uh, so there's. I'm looking at the thieves' tools and spyglass. But it looks like there's different levels of them. Yes, that would be for your common gear, not your special gear, though. And the higher levels give bigger bonuses. Base Thieves tools just remove the penalty for not having tools. Each rank of level actually gives you additional modifiers. Uh. So like a level 3 Thieves tool is like a plus 4 to Thieves tool rolls. In addition to so... all your other bonuses. I, I would prefer to get the best possible. Um, that would come out of your 250 gold piece gear budget. Okay. You don't need to spend your special items on those. 
I'm also looking at the palm crossbow, the clockwork recorder. Those are also all common. For this portion where I'm giving you stuff, all you have to do is decide if you want a magic weapon, magic armor, or something else. Oh. The way you spend your 250 gold is entirely up to you. Oh jeez, I need help with that, though. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm not really sure. I probably wouldn't go armor, I'd go weapon or special. Special if you want to be even better at the spy stuff, or weapon if you also want to be good at stabbing since it's not really your focus. What would fall under other? All kinds of stuff. Ooh. In your case, things that make you good at spycraft. Like, really good. I'm for it. Okay. In that case, uh, give yourself a hand crossbow, two daggers, and then... Okay, you have a necklace. Uh, it comes from the astral plane, and it's a deception-based item, so when you decide what you want it to look like, make it thusly. It is called the Whisper of the First Lie. Oh my. It is a bottle with whispers distilled from the first lie ever told. Plus three to deception checks while you wear it, and you can attempt to counteract effects that would force you to tell the truth don't always necessarily succeed them. Mm. I have sent you a link. Oh, thank you. Got a three action power that lets you unstop the vial and release the lie. You can never oh, no. do it again if you do, and it becomes inert. But if you do... It has the same effect as if casting the spell Fabricated Truth with a difficulty to beat of 47. Holy shit. <laughs> Which allows you to lie even to most demigods. Successfully. Damn. That's one time use, still. Aw. The effect with the deception and the ability to avoid being forced to tell the truth is permanent and constant until you empty the bottle. And you can come up with a cool reason why you have that and don't tell anyone else. Because you should always lie to them when they ask. <clears throat> I mean, I have an idea. Okay. And of course, wearing an item like that makes you prone to rarely tell the truth ever to anyone. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was really loud. <laughs> Alright. Odette. What's your name? It's not Nikolai. <laughs> Where would you like to lean for your special thing? Other. Okay. scroll past the deck of many things and it always makes me laugh when I see it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm looking up large creatures for no reason in particular and I really want a giant possum. Anyway, don't mind me. I, what? What? <laughs> like in real life or in the game? 
in the game. Aww. I mean, I'd, I'd have a possum as a pet, but... Same. Yes, dear. Well, I'm still deciding which okay. of these. Okay. Ooh! There's hypocrite. Anyway, sorry. Yes. You have a special item that will allow everyone to be connected. Of course, that also means it can't really move around much and it has a curse. But you have the void mirror, not a void mirror, the void mirror. It was created on a distant planet by a now extinct alien cult to aid in unlocking the secrets of the Dark Tapestry, which is the far realm in Pathfinder. It's a five foot tall, two foot wide mirror of black glass. As long as it's unmounted in a frame, it functions only as a mirror, save that it always reflects the sky as if it were night, regardless of the time of day, if the sky can be reflected in it. If you put it in a frame, however, it becomes a window into space, displaying a star field rather than a reflection. The view is any view of the night sky possible from its current location regardless of day. Observations add plus three to perception checks or astronomy lore regarding the sky. I'll send you a link too. You can shift the point of view by moving your hand, causing the scene to reorient in any direction desired. Anyone who peers you... into it, which doesn't affect you because you're blind. I was about to say, I'm like, are you sure you want to get oh, yes. <laughs> Yes. The observation thing when I'm blind. Yes, because you can still tell it where to look and other people can see. And here's why you'd ask them to do it and be glad you can't. Anyone who looks into the void mirror must succeed on a will save or become frightened because things look back. <laughs> uh, frightened at a stacking, or not stacking, but varying levels depending on your save. Mm hmm. When it's placed in the frame, the other things it can do that are far more important are halt the ongoing transformation of a creature that has performed an apotheosis transformation, which won't happen for a while, but will be handy when it does. And it also allows you to do uh, a variety of rituals if researched, which are dice rolls that may require different people from the group to do so. Those you'll have to uncover. Sent. Thank you. Uh, you can have. You can't even wear armor, can you? Uh, yeah, I can. You have light. Yeah. Your choice of light armor and an extra fifty gold in adventurous equipment, because weapons would not do you a lot of good. Unless I wanted to like hit somebody I knew. Yeah, sure. Correct. Okay, anybody with last minute questions besides Ambrose will do your adventuring gear offline. For now, we'll just say you have the basic things you need. Um, so I have I have a question. Because mm -hmm. I'm getting a cart because I, I have things. I have wares. Mm -hmm. Um, what can I... She has wares. Yes. What kind of large animal can I have to pull my cart? Uh... Donkeys are about 30 gold. It's the mm -hmm. cheapest way to do it. Mm hmm. Exotic things cost more. Mm hmm. How much gold do you have left unspent? Um, so a cart is only three gold pieces. Uh -huh. So. And you don't care about all, any other adventuring gear? All the rest of my stuff are like copper pieces. So, I mean, I can finagle something. Dire Wolf costs about 200. That's not what I wanted. Dire bear, <laughs> dire bear is about two fifty. Okay. Uh, what else could be appropriate to the region in the moon? elk? One hundred and fifty for a, a, a stag. Okay. I will work up to the thing that I want. Send me what it is in the side, and I'll tell you. Oh, you're gonna tell me no. I already know. 
but she will work up to it because she's heard about them and she's fascinated. Tended anyways, so I know. <laughs> Ellie. Uh, yeah, if it's a baby. Meaning it has to grow. Yeah. And uh -huh. eventually you'll have to take the skills necessary to deal with that. Uh huh. That's okay. fine. Even in the baby form, it's about the size of uh, a small horse. Uh huh. It's effectively uh, unable to aid you in combat until we can advance it through skill training. But yeah, you can have that for essentially all of your remaining money. Sure. Done. Sold. I don't care. Uh, because of where you're going to start, it's not as rare as you might think. But it will be where you're going to end up. That's okay. <laughs> Anybody else? Um, Given that my character has like a their own tavern should i be looking at items that i would be bringing with me traveling or what do you want me to be looking at more specifically just what you would be adventuring with your bar is self-sustaining when we start and it gives you a minor income that's downtime as the game progresses okay. you can actually start earning real money from it but at game start you break even and can survive <laughs> works for me thank you oh what was this our starting gold for spending i missed it 250, 250. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, on that note then, we are going to take our yeah. mid-show break. And then when we come back, we'll begin the tale. So don't go anywhere, audience. We'll be back in 10 to 15 minutes.
Jack's a good friend of mine. <laughs> and we've returned. And we open with the line, Jack's a good friend of mine. Okay. Let's talk about Ustalov. Let's so switch to something appropriately spooky. Spooky. Yeah, there we go. Loud. Okay. The immortal principality of Ustalav is a once proud realm that suffered under the clawed hands of the Whispering Tyrant for centuries. Map coming to Discord. This one is landmark only without names because it's appropriate to the setting you're in. You can see the layout of said land this way. <laughs> the big body of water to the south is a cove that goes into the ocean. <clears throat> Probably should have put my contact in my other eye so I could see better. For those new to Pathfinder, which is several of you, here's context of the greater regional map. Uh, oh, wait, this one might not actually have it because it might not be far enough south. Hold on. Well, on this one, you can see where Duane's from on the west there. Yeah, here we go. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Ustalov is northwest of the big giant lake in the middle. That has the island in the center. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, Last Wall borders Ustalov. Ustalov is to the northeast of Last Wall. You can see the name of it north of the lake. It is that entire region. It includes the Hungry Mountains. Carrion Hill, parts of Raz Moran, and of course, the Whispering Tyrant himself is trapped in his prison under uh, the Isle of Terror in the middle of the lake. Well, parts of him are, other parts are in Gallowspire in the Hungry Mountains. <coughs> so, the modern history of your realm began in 2361 AR which it is now currently uh, 4710 AR so your realm is almost 2000 years old actually a little bit more than 2000 years old it's called Ustalav because uh, Soyvidia Ustav united all of the Verisian settlements that were here and drove out uh, orcs and Kelid Numerians and Sarkorians to unify it into a country. For five centuries, his line ruled the land until near constant feuding began to dominate the kingdom. It was divided into 16 counties after that to avoid civil war. So everything is a county in Ustalov. Uh, various noble families were given their own counties in perpetuity, and they owe their allegiance to the monarch. Uh, this golden age ended after about a thousand years when the Whispering Tyrant appeared. The wicked and immortal warlord Tar Bifan, a Lich King. Uh, he, of course, dominated the entire region with vast armies of the undead and uh, diplomacy uniting all of the orcs. He was also a military genius. He created a land of the dead that he ruled over for 600 years. Eventually, he was finally unthroned during the Shining Crusade in 3754. Uh, Taldor 
a distant land, launched the crusade to free the people. At great cost. They were joined by the dwarves from Kragodan, so your ain't your uh descend your ancestors may be from there, Rosie, if you want them to be. And the famous Knights of Ozem. Three quarters of a century after the crusade began, the tyrant was finally defeated and imprisoned in the capital of Galluspire in the mountains. Two of the sixteen or I'm sorry, four of the sixteen counties were lost. Two are entirely uninhabitable and are the wasteland around Gar Gallows Spire. And the others were given to the Crusaders to create the nation of Last Wall as a permanent guard against any resurgent horror. They watch over Ustalav, and if too much evil happens, they come charging in in their shiny paladin armor and slaughter everyone they think might even be remotely involved. Because never again. Ustalav re-established itself after the Whispering Tyrant's defeat and renamed the Immortal Principality of Ustalav, preserving much of the rule and culture of the Old Kingdom. But it could never recapture its formal, former glory. The royal line had died out during the Dark Age, and few surviving nobles had any real ties. So mm. after a census of who was left, the crown was given to Prince Andrados Ordranti, creating even more infighting among the nobility, a series of weak losers, weak rulers, super losers, and a slowing <laughs> of the country's already stuttering recovery, which was... Uh, further hampered by an orc invasion that is called a single orc invasion but was several decades of frequent orc armies trying to take over and thus it endured to the present day Ustalav has known peace for a century or two now as much as it can be but it's a dying place full of horrors and the undead where everyone is terrified of everyone else as a strongly divided country struggling to reclaim its former glory and burdened with a history of darkness few nations can equal. Recent events in the last 15 years or so, uh, Prince Ordranti moved to the capital and then died. Uh, the current prince ascended to the throne by reportedly assassinating his rivals, which would be his family. And then the civil war started which is still raging in the east and has created a wasteland called the Furrows in an area that used to be farmland, causing food shortages all across the region. And of course, the legacy of the Whispering Tyrant is always haunting the place. It is a monarchy, and uh, there are, are 13 distinct regions called counties, all still subservient to the monarchy. There are three regions the counties are in. The Soivoda, which is the entire eastern area, still run by the original noble families from millennia ago. And their power is immense, and they even have so much power the prince couldn't unseat them if he wanted. The Palatinates, in the northwest third of the country, are the area that's currently in the most upheaval. And they are constantly overthrowing each other and assassinating each other in mostly bloodless coups. Uh, that only consists of three of the city-states, Lozari, Canterwall, and Vyland. And then the southwestern wasteland is Verlick, where nobody goes. Nobody alive. It's also next to two hostile nations, the orc-inhabited hold of Belkson to the west, and the demon-infested World Wound to the north, which is a terror in the world that goes straight to hell. Uh, east are humans, but they include the tyrannical land of the living god Razmaran, the constant chaos of the River Kingdoms, and a barbarian monarchy, Numeria. So, Ustalavans are insular and distrusting of foreigners and 90% human. Thus, people in the audience hearing us say, appear human. That's why. Uh... And then, of course, the only friendly neighbor is the southwestern border of West Lastwall, but they always are suspicious of everything happening in Ustalov. The inhabitants are a lot of half-orc bloodlines, a lot of sorceress bloodlines from the Shining Crusade, and uh, Zolgath bloodlines from the Deep Woods. A lot of Verisian religion and culture here. 
Desna strongly worshipped Phrasma, of course, and Ergothoa, as mentioned during character creation. Questions on any of that? Mm, no. Nope. nope. I have three maps. You will be beginning the story in the, Zvo the Soy Voda. Soy Voda? S O I V O D A. Which includes the following regions. You will be in Versex. Uh, the capital of Versex, looks at Duane, is Thrushmore. <laughs> the ruler is Count Hazerton Lowell's the Fourth, even though he hasn't been seen in a long time. But that's someone else's story and problem. I wonder why. <laughs> <clears throat> and the government is uh, noble autocracy. Here is a handy link. Take a moment to peruse that. I help you get in character. Um, what direction am I originally from? Uh, Verizia. Far, far away. Northwest of here. Okay. And you are be in Rosenport, a busy lakeside port and home to the Cinco Mocti School of Sciences. So a forward thinking area. Somewhat. Science is like, you have ghosts in your blood, you should do cocaine about it. Science! <clears throat> we should do cocaine. I mean, I detected no lie there, so... Cocaine. So we're gonna open... ...on Schist, Iron Splitter. And a typical evening in your bar. Ramir, you're drinking in this fine establishment this evening. Just because you need a drink. You killed a lot of orcs last week, and you need a drink. Uh, yes, well, it does help the blood go down a bit easier, I suppose. Uh, Nikolai, you are also here. I am here. Uh, people to see, people to do. Okay. So, when the scene begins, Nikolai, you're up at the bar. And Ramir, you're also at the bar, but you're at opposite ends. None of the three of you have ever met. And Schist is trying to deal with two very unruly patrons, one of which who is very angry about their tab, and the other one of which is very angry that that one's very angry about their tab. And they're both very drunk. Tiet! I would like you to roleplay the very angry, very drunk person mad about their tab. <laughs> oh, that's me? <laughs> Not your character, but I'm having oh. you play the NPC. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey! Hey! Why, why, why I gotta pay this? Because that's what you drank. You drank that much, so you have to pay that much. I didn't drink money. I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna pay for what you drank. How it works. Did you didn't tell me what? How much is this? Can I give you a goat? Uh, I'd oh, rather geez. not take barter. Look, look, come here, come here. Come no, here. what about you, what? you just talk to me? What? You what? smell what? rather bad. Why can't we just be friends and what can we, what can we do to like, can I just go? No, <laughs> you can't just go, but you can do. Sober yourself up. 
Full of, like, I, fall asleep in a corner, sober yourself up, and right. pay when you can read your bill. Sober it up. Somebody told me to sober up, you need to drink. No, nah, you're... For all my friends. No, nah, I'm, I'm cutting you off. So let's, you, you had enough, clearly. I don't understand what's going on. We're having fun. Are we having fun, everybody? All right, then. Uh, can I just knock him out or something? <laughs> Depends on what's happening in the side here. One moment. Seems like this. You know why? You know why I drink, right? Beforehand. I come in here, and and then I drink. And that, to clarify, that, that's the... why you drink. Oh my god. <laughs> To clarify for the audience, this is not Dwayne's character. Dwayne is playing an NPC in this scene. <laughs> Dwayne's monk is not an alcoholic, as far as I know. <laughs> also, you're very good at this, Dwayne. Suspicious. I know. Good. I'm good at playing drunk people. <laughs> yes, continue, not Ramir. Now that you're involved, continue. And schist. No, no, no punch in face quite yet because other things are happening. Which other person you'll have to describe how that occurs. But Ramir and, oh, so, and Drunk Guy, continue. So tell me, uh, why, why do you drink again? Things are bad. Life's bad. I want to be happy. This uh, is a bottle of happiness. It's too expensive. Is, that, oh. And this short person right here just wants money. He doesn't want Excuse happiness. Excuse me, short person. Are, are you not short? I'm a dwarf. I mean, clearly that's a little bit ah. insulting. You can't okay. see. I, I, I am. I am. Um, Nicola. I'm. I'm sorry, think? my stout friend. You are not short. You are just a dwarf. Oh, look! You you look like you could use a hug. You said you want to be happy. I will Ooh. come give you a big hug. Come Who are you? Oh. You could use a hug. You, you know, <laughs> I, I will come here. Oh, yes. I give it's the biggest the We're all friends. That's wonderful. Yes, friendship. Friends. Yes. What is it about short people? And, and now you're saying yeah, big yeah. hugs. I feel a little attacked. I, I will slap yes, his back attacked. heartily. He grabs Ramir mm -hmm. and goes in for Nikolai just as a big, like, Group hug. Yeah, we all, we all need group hug. Oh yes, yeah, group hug. You know yes, what so will make you happiest is if you pay the lovely dwarf. Person. Nikolai, roll yes. thievery. Tiet and Ramir, or I'm sorry, NPC and Ramir, roll perception. NPC no modifier, just T20. <laughs> Actually minus two. You're really drunk. Fourteen. Oh, okay. there's no way I'm gonna see a rogue do this. There's no way. Thirty-one. <laughs> I. Where where we're that? Oh, wow. we're, we're, with my, with my, with my mm -hmm. roll. Um, Just perception. Oh yeah, seventeen. Okay. Yeah, no. Nowhere near thirty-one. I assume. No, 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 no. Okay. Seventeen. No, that's. <laughs> so, before we resolve the scene, first I would like Schist to describe their appearance, then Ramir, then Nikolai. Uh, I'll have you know that Schist is a tall dwarf. For a dwarf, thank you very much. <laughs> he is, of course, stout and, and built. Uh, like he swings heavy things for a living, uh, like hammers, and moves large barrels of ale around. Uh, he's got a great big bushy beard and a scar over left eye. Looks like it's healed over. It's old. And, uh, He's got a very dogged expression on his face because damn it, he's, he's going to get his money. This is a livelihood here. And I, apparently I'm Scottish. If you, want, if you want, if you want to live your life, you got to loop it. You loop it. Loop it. What? Oh, loop. Yes. What that one was, that say? one was free. Oh, you can have that one free. Your your wisdom outstrips your age, sir. It is fantastic to hear you speak. Maybe you should uh, just Oops. pay. I mean, this is a service you have ingested, a product, and now you should pay. I and I don't want it back. Or you can 
Oh, I was about to say, you can return it. No! no. <laughs> you can't no, return it. No, you really can't. Don't you can't. dare vomit all over me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Do I have any money on me? Oh, yeah. You could definitely pay the tab, but you don't want to. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, buddy! <laughs> Sorry. You're a noble person. Oh. Even better. Jackass. Got it. <laughs> okay. All right. We can come. Let's make a deal. You like deals? Okay. I like. We can make a deal. What? Uh, what is your uh, deal, sir? This guy, right? I'm not talking to you. I'm, I'm talking. talking talk, I'm talking, I'm to, talking you. to you. The dwarf. Oh yes. So I would like to hear this deal of yours. Yeah. So. I. It's you, as a person. You. No, I don't want to pay. But you. <laughs> That's clear. Seem like yes. you want to pay, and we're friends, right? Right. Nowhere near. <laughs> but you gave me a hug. I, I gave you a hug. Yes, absolutely. I felt I needed a hug. I felt alone in this place in that moment in time. He immediately you know turns to the sad drunk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> at knowing that he has no friends. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. You have friends somewhere. Yes, absolutely. Somewhere. And you'd have more friends if you paid your bill right now. I would be your friend if you paid your bill. He starts sobbing on the bar, on the, all across the bar. He's knocking, knocking drinks over as he's like fla half flailing on the way. Like, yeah, oh, if you break any right. of those glasses, you're paying for them. You're right. I have real friends. Nobody likes me. All my real friends died. Ah, well, that he is, died. Here, and that he just like starts so pulling stuff out of his out of his pockets, whether it's money or not. It's just like you're here. You take, I take everything I got. And it's like like a like a toenail and oh. <laughs> like a bag of coin of which may or may not be real. No, oh, that's just so sad for you. Yeah, I'm sorry the, that your friends died. Long lost. Yes, it is wife. very sad. I'm going to go that's... back to my spot at the bar. And if you need anything, don't call for me. <laughs> a storyteller, how much do his, does it look like his shoes are worth? Does it look like they would cover his tab? Well, when he first came in, his shoes were probably worth more than your bar stool set, all of them. But more than one person has puked on them, so they'd still cover the tab. They're probably partially filled with urine as well. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> this guy is just. Gross. He is a sensory He's just overload. An animal. God damn. I'm going to oh, okay. check that coin purse that has probably fake money in it or whatever. Probably not very large. It's one of his smaller ones. The large one is probably hidden in his pants somewhere so that no one steals it. Yeah, no one wants to go in there. Uh... Uh, I'm just checking for the money for his tab. I don't... If he pays, he can leave. Uh, strangely, he doesn't seem to have a coin purse, but it was there. The strings are still there. <laughs> so he just throws the strings on the bar. They've Take my money! They've been cut recently. Well, this is indeed unfortunate for you, sir. Nikolai, you have an additional 400 gold now. <laughs> I didn't I'll, mean to uh, take the gold. I just meant the paperwork's to take... paperwork's in the purse. No. At least that's what you're going to tell everyone. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I tell you what, uh, you leave your fancy shoes here, and you can leave. He turns and looks at the bar, noticing that the pouch that he thought that he threw on there is no longer there, and it is just the the tassels. He gets that, that moment of sobriety. He turns to Ramirez. Like, you, sir. You are a charlatan. <laughs> Give me back my money. Oh, a charlatan, mind you. You placed hands on me. It's actually a small 
small grouping of gasps because a nobleman just called a pharasmid cleric a charlotte's into his face. Okay. Like covered in holy symbols. <laughs> and he got, he runs his hands through his beard. I will excuse this because you are drunk. You must figure out a way to pay for this tab. You have and taken I don't my money, sir. I don't care where you get the money from, but you clearly don't have it on you. Shist, you can punch him in the face now. Uh, yeah, I did that. <laughs> How much is this rope worth? A lot. Not as much as the <laughs> shoes, though. Okay. He wasn't wearing the silk one tonight. He knew he was going to puke everywhere. Uh, what a, I'm assuming I'm rolling... D20 Str plus... I uh, Proficiency level plus modifier. It's your level modifier. So your proficiency okay. is plus two for train, plus four for expert, plus six for master. And then your level modifier is math that I don't remember all that. Yeah. Uh, so I rolled 11. I need to write this stuff down. Never going to remember it. Your proficiency modifier is two at this level. So mm -hmm. if you're trained... You would be two plus two plus strength modifier. Uh, I'm. Everyone is trained in unarmed and... attacks in Pathfinder. Yes. Well, I think I, I might be. I'm an expert in unarmed. So it'd be actually. four plus two plus strength modifier. Okay. So eleven plus eight. <laughs> oh yeah. Plus Roll 19. damage. Roll a d4 plus your strength modifier. You have four hit points, noble person. Yeah. <laughs> question is, do I still have four hit points? <laughs> Unlikely. <laughs> With that strength modifier alone, you're probably out. Uh, I rolled a two. Nope, yep, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> Straight knockout, right to the temple. Uh, I grabbed the back of his his coat when I see him go down. Okay. And, 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 and his collar, and I just kind of like lift him up and set him on the bar stool, grabbing his shoulders in the you know that awkward way. You set him down in a stool. And I'm just like, well, I think uh, make a reflex. It's time to get here. your your money's worth. A reflex save. Hmm. 21. Unconscious guy goes down, sits in the chair. You set him down too heavily, shakes his body. Projectile vomit. You get out of the way, though. Ugh. This then he goes man. straight down on the on the bar, on the the countertop, face first. Yeah, because I'm not catching him after he tries to puke on me. Uh <laughs> Said I didn't want it back. Damn it, man. Not to yet. Ah, well, and then I start taking, unlacing his shoes. This was a good idea. I'll give it, it's fine. And this man clearly <laughs> owes you at least this. And then I take off his coat. You're here? Oh. Uh, <laughs> he had the coat over as well. What? I am here. You're here in the back corner, like fucking Aragorn in Lord of the Rings. For whatever reason, you're just like brooding in the back table in the shadow. You're here because it's the best ale in the region, but you're not here to get drunk. You're here for a drink and a cheap meal. Just so you know. And that's when Odette's character sweeps in, who you can describe your entry any way you want. Your pet's still outside, though. That'll have to wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> my, uh, yeah. My, my buddy, my baby, is outside. Um... Uh... Uh, she uh, a based on what you can see because she has her hood over her but you can see white locks falling from under her hood you would assume uh, is an older woman uh, kind of like hunched over from the weather outside because I'm assuming it's evening yep late evening yeah so she's like hunched over from the weather um, has her um, hood up but you can see like flowing um, fabric underneath in whites and light blues um, and she kind of um, like shuffles over to the bar um, where um, 
she goes uh, and uh, to Schist. Yep. This is going to be a bad time. Um, <laughs> uh, and she light uh, as uh, he is uh, doing some bartending. She like happens to like catch his hand at the right time, and she's just like, "Is this the place with the best ale?" Oi! What can I get for you? I'll take a. I'll take a glass. All right. Uh, you need help finding a seat? Uh, uh, no. I think I can, I can find it. And she, like, you kind of see her, like, tap and, like, till she finds a stool and then kind of just, like, lifts herself up onto it. All right. Uh, he goes and gets you a, a, a glass of his, uh, whichever ale he particularly likes right now that he's made and, uh, he very carefully like sort of puts it on the bar so that it touches your hand so that you don't have to like feel around for it. Cool. How very nice of you. Uh, and she'll lightly grasp it and uh, and take a sip. It's the Swamp Berry Honey Mead. It's exceptionally good. Yeah, it is. It's Tart strange. yet sweet. Good head. Wonderful aftertaste. You hear her lightly mutter under her breath. It's strange how they knew such things. As good ale. Uh. Mm, can I can I get you anything else? Uh. Not at the moment. No. And then she kind of like turns and like kind of like what you would assume is like gaze around uh, your establishment. Um, she's people watching. You can sense where they all are. Mm -hmm. The ones that matter. All right. Well, let me know if I can help you with anything or uh, you're then... asking if this is the place for the best ale. Then you're not you're not from around here. So uh let, it, let me know if I can help you with anything local. And then there's the sound of wet leather being slapped on a bar top. That's Ramir putting the shoes up. Ah, uh, thank you. I guess I can wash these out. It's not Those very stores. polite to put dirty shoes on a bar. Ah, that's just what we got. Sorry. The Come guy falls off the stool and hits least. the floor. He is. Do you want me to take out the cartridge? Oh, no, I, I can manage myself, but thank you. <clears throat> and, oh, uh, no yeah, he gets up and just drags the guy out very unceremoniously by his bare feet. <laughs> no, Mom, five more minutes. <laughs> I love to hate this, this guy. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> Suspiciously good at this, Duane. <laughs> You're now in control of yourself, Tiet, should you care. You saw all this. Yeah, he Tiet would be really sitting, yeah, just sitting in the corner, probably uh very slowly sipping whatever drink he was given. Taking very small, slow bites out of whatever stew. Or what, what do you have on the menu for today, Schist? Um, probably some kind of sandwich, some kind of stew, like basic items that maybe change on a weekly basis. Yeah, so it, comes it definitely in. would have taken a stew, something a little bit more hearty for the road. It's a horseradish and yak cheese sandwich. There you go. Oh, that does sound good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a classy joint. I am a tad bit hungry, I'm not going to lie. All right, this, he stew might is, this stew is <laughs> the house special with no elaboration. Oh. 
Uh, well, yeah, he's not from around here, so he probably would assume that the house special is indeed special. Actually, it's and really it's, good, but you don't you don't know what kind of meat that is. Yeah, it's it's meat with a capital M. And if you ask, the only answer you get is a curt. It's not dwarf. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, when you if if anyone was to look and see Tiet, he is a you know a slightly palish in complexion. Uh, he does have he does have hair. He is not a bald monk. Uh, he has been traveling for some time. Uh, light brown hair, short, not very long, uh, but he does have the beginnings of the Fu Manchu mustache. So it does come like pretty far down. Yes. <laughs> you can't throw it over his shoulder yet, though. No, yeah, I can't. You can't, you can't like do the, you know, the, <laughs> you can't do any of that. But it's 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 a start. His clothes are very plain. Uh, he's not wearing any type of armor. It is just the robes of his uh, monastery. Time passes. Uh oh. I was going to say, Odette kind of like leans over to Ramir. Ramir? Yep. Is that mm -hmm. how you pronounce your name? Okay. Yes. Um, you're a religious man, are you not? Yes, I am. I come from the Church of Phrasma. What do I know about the Church of Phrasma? Uh, in this region, everything. Okay. Which... Just give me a TLDR. Yep. The oldest of the gods that are known. Uh, apparently her realm is a vast gothic cathedral located on the infinite spire at the center of all planes. She can see all of time, observing birth, lives, and deaths of every soul, and is the final arbiter of the soul's destination after death. The ultimate psychopomp. Also the mistress of fate. And ah. final judgment. So my next line plays right into my plans. Anyway, uh <clears throat> Devious, yes. <laughs> oh yes. So you could say that you do believe in fate, in destiny. I do. I believe if I may be so bold, it is a construct of the gods willing and the choices we have made. I believe more in chaos. RF chaos. It raids us all. Well done. Thank you for the raid. Thank you for the raid. I'm sure um, and she like turns uh, to where uh, she heard Nikolai's voice uh, and I'm sure a man of your nature would say a lot of things. Your reaction to that, Nikolai, is probably hand moves towards Dagger. Do I know you? But you don't. You don't <laughs> at all. Uh, he does narrow his eyes and just stares intently. You can do that all you want. I'm not going to notice. <laughs> it's, it is a beautiful... He's hoping if he's quiet again, she'll forget he's there. Nope. <laughs> she won't. It is a beautiful partnership of choice. And plan I believe fate is a fickle thing but it is also harder than cement it is beautiful it is true well tonight I was brought here to speak with some individuals about a court a Fate on a course, something, something, oracle-y. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm very discombobulated by having one eyeball, okay? It should not mess with my words, but it does. Um, there's something written in the stars. 
something that's going to happen here in Ravensport. That's what we're calling it now, because that's better. It's Ravensport. (laughs) Speaking of which, before you finish that line, who would like to be our official recorder? It's not going to be the Oracle. Don't even freaking look at me. (laughs) I have one eyeball this game. (laughs) Nikolai will be our recapper, of course. (laughs) Blah, blah, blah. uh, Excellent. I can do it. Okay, thank you. Carry on. Thank you, Dwayne. All right, we're in Ravensport. Ravensport. Yep. (laughs) What the hell is it supposed to be? Oh, Rosenport. No, I like Ravensport a lot better. Anyway. Um... Uh, something written in the stars. Blood of... What the hell was I saying? Uh, Fate, you have come to Ravensport to... Ah, yes, to bring some chosen individuals together, much like yourself. No, chosen, that is a... If you care to listen. Flattery? Consider myself interested. I will hear what you have to say. Who I want to say my other... hearing is stupid is stupid good, and I hear Nikolai put up his hood. Um, <laughs> so Accurate. trying to sneak away is not going to work. I can sense you, you know. He kind of just freezes, like... He'll like wave at her. No reaction. No reaction. <laughs> and then he'll as quietly as possible get up to leave. Uh, sh- uh, like as ridiculously you're passing... appearing to be trying to be stealthy, like tiptoe, oh, like also, a kid. I have one other thing to do. Speaking of that, even if other patrons look at him like a weirdo. I feel like uh, while you look that up, I must read yes. this beer review because Rosie found the greatest beer review Oopsie. generator of all time. Oopsie. Oopsie. A beer review so the beer, Tiet, pours an opalescent mahogany with a soft, pillowy head. Excellent lacing. Very light, bready scent laced with a touch of grapefruit and baking soda. <laughs> Overweening <laughs> oaky taste. Good job. Punctuated with plum and cilantro. Extremely weak mouthfeel and hoppy finish. <laughs> what the hell? Punctuating with baking soda? Extremely weak mouthfeel. <laughs> What the fuck? You have to look at the Discord for you guys. <laughs> this generator is amazing. Good job. That's, that is indeed I amazing. I clicked Holy... buttons I didn't mean wow. to. Okay. Oh, wow. I'm thinking you should switch to your silver contacts. No, it's fine. I I mean, I click buttons regardless of what fucking contacts I'm in. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> Um, as Nikolai is trying to get past me, um, uh, I stole too many things from too many different ancestries. The audience would like to have the link, Rosie. <laughs> oh, I'll do it. She can drop it uh, in the Discord, but I'll put it in here for people who don't have it. Oh, I can do that. That's no problem. Oh, okay, you can do that. That's no problem. <laughs> what about me? Can I do that? Is that no problem? Yeah, well, are I you think you're a moderator? Oh, no. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Even I'm not a mod. Uh, uh, I'll send you the intern in a second. Carry on. So, uh, as Nikolai, um, like, sn- like sneakily, like gets off his bar stool and tries to get out, um, you just see her kind of like stick her hand out in your direction. So, uh, are you sure I... you cannot see? Are you trying to be stealthy? Are you stealthing right now, or are you? He's just trying just to be like quiet to a little old lady. <laughs> okay. 
If I were trying to go stealthy, you would know. I was simply trying to make sure she could not hear me. I don't have to worry about hearing you. You have a very pungent odor. Wow. <laughs> wow. Holy shit. I, I beg your pardon? I showered this morning. I put on the neutral smelling body odor stuff. I am sure certain aspects of your personage you would rather me beg my pardon and keep my mouth shut. Come. Oh, sit. do tell them, though. I want and to know. And she motions to the seat next to her. Also, I just got to comment on what you said. If I was being stealthy, you'd know. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I need that on a t-shirt. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I love I love the fact that in these games stealthy is just like John Cena waving his hand in front of his face. <laughs> oh, did you fail ninja school? <laughs> <laughs> Am I able to hear any of this conversation between Odette and Ramir about uh, fate and, uh, and Phrasma? Uh, she's talking at this uh, at whatever level she was talking at. She's not trying to hide it, uh, but she's also not definitely like boisterously announcing it either. So I would not be opening. I would not be openingly. Openingly? Open, openly. 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 There we go. Uh, Dwayne, if it matters, um, uh, I'm not leaving anybody out. I just haven't gotten to you yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. I would, like I said, I wouldn't be eavesdropping. Mm -hmm. Uh, Schist, if you would, uh, do you, do you two want anything to drink? I think conversations are always easier over a drink or two. Convince hey, can me I get why you I should stay. Because more than likely there's money in it. Okay, I'll stay. I would also like a drink whatever he is having on his tab. It's that baking soda after taste. Uh, sh <laughs> whatever he is, whatever the rich man who left is having on uh, his tab. Yes, absolutely. Besides us, uh, Sir Bartender, who else is from out of town? Uh, looking around. Aragorn in the corner there. Uh, the, the only person you fella. don't recognize. Yeah, the, the Bruden fellow with his, his dirty feet up on the table. Why does um, his pipe well, light only his eyes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, she, like, puts her hand out. Can you point me in his direction? I'll, I'll walk you over, sure. And uh, he uh, reaches... I presumably you're taller than he is, but he takes your hand and uh, walks you over to. Uh, wait, how tall are you? I don't remember how tall dwarves are. Uh, you could go as high as just under five feet, as low as just I'll under three. I don't remember, to be honest. I think dwarves are still considered medium, but they're on the we shorter are, side. We are medium size. I do remember that. Yeah. But I don't remember if there's like an actual given height. Were you like in the four foot range? I'll or... go with that, sure. Four foot, four foot tall. I mean, like you know, you anyway. She's not that much taller than you. She's like four ten, five foot ish. Yes, yeah, so you're probably so. about the same, actually. So we're. She's a rather small human. <clears throat> or she's just has an extremely hunched back. You're not quite oh. sure. So I would be way taller than you because you he is six foot. And so he's intimidated by a very tiny <laughs> yeah, old, lady. <laughs> old lady. At least you think it's an old lady. Yep. <laughs> anyway, uh, she lets uh, Iron Splitter uh, lead her over to the table. I'm not even going to try. It's fine. Uh, yeah, he leads you over and uh, says, 
Would you take your feet off the table and uh, this this lovely lady would like to talk with you? Can I get you anything? He only moves his feet because he's probably in some strange stance. (laughs) Smells strongly of horseradish at this table. Uh, She very much crinkles her nose at this. Yes. Uh, It's very strong over here. You... Would you mind joining us at the bar? I have something that might be of interest. I am sorry. Do I know you? No. My name is Odette. Some Strange. Some might that... know me wandering the lands as the Blue Heron. A name I am not familiar with. Do any of you have society? As a I... trained skill. Don't. Nikolai, you do. I don't know anybody <laughs> else. Ooh. You can roll it, Nikolai. You're the only one. <laughs> or if you have lore trained for local knowledge of any kind. 26. You've heard the name. Fortune teller. Very good. Oh, you're the fortune teller. I am. Very good. I know. From what I understand, but... I think you are more than good because you can see me without seeing me and that frightens me. Uh, I do not know your name and I do not know why you seek me out. I do know that the name Odette rhymes with my name and that in itself is fate. Something that I must follow. Consider it sealed. And she turns, expecting you to follow her, and goes, uh, want, like, she does, like, those sweeping steps, uh, and walks back over to the, um, <clears throat> the bar stool. He will follow, commenting how your martial stances are old, yet powerful. <laughs> <laughs> That's just so I don't stub my toe. <laughs> If you Please tell me she says stance. this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> From years of not wanting to shove my toe into something. Um, once they are all uh, seated at a bar stool, um, she. Can I keep my fortune telling role from earlier? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, she's just like, I. Not everyone that I seek is here. And Iron Splitter, you are included in my tale. Who said anything about the tale? I did. Yeah, yeah, he is literally checking to see if you have a tale because he did not notice one. No, no, like like story tale. T A L E. Yes, nobody in this group has a tale. Yeah, nobody has a tale. Although. All right. Hold on. Hold on. I have to I have to look at Dwayne's character real quick. Also, I approve of your. You're name, messing up Dwayne. my mojo. Uh, yes, Dwayne's character does have a very nice tail, but it's not an animal tail. Oh, so, I just got that. Okay. Arts buns. Confused. <laughs> oh. I can tell you All have right. buns of steel from here. <laughs> <laughs> I can sense the sturdiness. Um, they clap when you walk. <laughs> <laughs> the clap of my ass cheeks alerts the guards. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this is all the fault of the beer generator. <laughs> it really is. I'm sorry, I just keep here laughing. I'm sitting here laughing, reading these ridiculous reviews. I'm sorry. <laughs> Again now. Right, that's okay. Gonna, that's gonna be the next stance for the monk classes. We're gonna need one beer review for every session in the recap, <laughs> doing. Okay, <laughs> that will happen. Um, and Iron Splitter, you are also included in this fate. So I implore you to wow your servant, your customers. Listen. We are missing one, 
but I'm sure they will turn up soon. And she reaches into her bags and takes out a very weathered pouch. Um, and she pulls out um, hand painted uh, tarot cards. Um, and um, you can tell that they're very, um, they're very rough. Like she, like whoever did them intentionally like layered on the paint. Um, and like the symbols and stuff are like raised. Um, you can tell so that way she can just feel the cards um, to know what they are. Anyway, I don't know what cards correlate with what I'm about to say, but just use your imagination because Dana should have. In future sessions, we'll actually do regenerated real tarot readings, yes. Yes, please can't tell if Ambrose is actually giggling or not because of the freaking band mask. <laughs> and you will never know. I can tell. Anyways, carry on. <clears throat> uh, she flips over a card. <laughs> um, I've come seeking. Can I Can I read what you wrote? Oh, yeah. And okay, the card's awesome. the hangman reversed. Okay. She pulls out the hangman reversed. I've come seeking a charming liar who cannot be trusted, but has a biting tongue. And pulls out a second card. The fool. Of the fool. And a wandering wise man with the furious fists. Third card. The fool is not always a negative card, Dwayne. <laughs> uh, third card is the uh, page. And a holy warrior of Phorasma, slayer of orcs. Fourth guard. Tower reversed. And a fine haired lad who makes the best ale in the land. Last card is devil reversed. And a compatriot yet to join us. A reclusive wise woman who lingers in the dark wood. All are needed to stop a tragedy. Right here on the lake. Final a horror. A horror. Unbeknownst to any of us. Here to seal its fate. Final card is death, but there's something weird about because it's a uh, grim reaper in a field of shadows. But the shadows are almost squirmy, like tentacles. All of us are needed to seal it away. And it will take all of us working together. And she swipes the pile back. I'm begging your pardon, but I am not a hero. Not I am heroes. not a warrior. Yes, I know. You're a liar and a cheat. But sometimes that is needed to get the job done. I think you are mistaken. Are you not good at your job? And I am not mistaken. Fate and the void have shown me the way and who I need. You are one of the ones who I need. Ah, yes. I am required to pick the void's pockets. I mean... I know you were here to take that gentleman's paperwork tonight. What the I... not? No. I was here to enjoy the tavern, of course. Right? You know... I was here before he came along. Yes, uh, uh, uh she's 
I pass I, no blame you, and I pass oil. no judgment. I am not here to prosecute you. But you said you knew my name and you know what I do and you know that I'm good and I, you know I'm not wrong. You can hear him take like a big gulp. <laughs> do we know more? Nikolai, I know you are not persuaded with words or good deeds, but, but perhaps this... you could be persuaded with money. That can always be persuaded with money. But how did you know my... Never mind. Uh, to be fair, that was a Savannah slip because I'm oh. looking at the Zoom thing. But I'm going to give it to your character. Whatever. She knew my name. I don't even... <laughs> Um, not for me, but if you do what we came here to do, and I know you think that you're here of your own volition, but both me and Ramir know better. Fate has funny ways of working. But if you follow through the, and she like cocks her head a little bit, like she's like searching for something, the Marsh family will pay handsomely. Well, then I suppose count me. I am fine with marsh money as long as it is not sopping wet or covered in mud. I am sorry, I am not from this area. Who is this marsh family? Um, unless you have local lore, like for the regional lore of some kind, heraldry maybe, or society, you wouldn't know. Because it's not from your uh, city-states, from another one nearby. However, Nikolai, obviously, you know. Oh, yes. Um... And you know that they're from a place that used to be called Baytown, but ever since the family took over with an iron rule, it's been called Ilmarsh. We could easily find them in Ilmarsh. They took over to Baytown quite a while ago. They are something of a family. I will gladly take this offer. <clears throat> you all have heard of Ilmarsh. It used to be called Baytown. It's a southeastern Ustalavic town in Versex. Uh, it's an insular fishing town with rumors of strange goings on in cults. Cults of the old ways. And uh, interesting birth defects in some of the people. Dwayne got it. <clears throat> um, you, uh, once Nikolai has um, signed on, so to speak, you can see that Odette takes a moment to, like, pause on each of you and, like, look. Um, you can kind of tell that she's, like, looking to see for your approval. Uh, if you're, like, agreeing to work together. So she'll turn uh, to uh, Tiet first. He will stand looking, like, very, very stoic, almost emotionless, uh, staring. But you can tell that he's taking it all in. Sees Ramir. Uh, do you, does Ramir have any symbol? Like, oh, yeah. Holy, holy symbol? Erasmus symbols on the shoulder pads, big okay. one in the chest, runes down the sword, might oh, yeah. have and, one on his cheek. <laughs> and Odette did just say, like, the, like, warrior of Charisma, so. As well. well, yeah. Er, I mean, even, even if you had said something like that, he would look for confirmation. And I'll smash it with a hammer. There are, there are many that call themselves warriors for Phrasma, yet few who follow her teachings. Uh, 
he kind of bristles at that, but he understands. Like he 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 pulls himself up, and like you hear the jangling of the metal pieces in his beard, and he just like kind of like looks at him crossways. I don't. Is he saying that out loud? <laughs> no, he wouldn't have said that out loud. Okay. That would have been in his. That would have been in his mind's words. Okay. <laughs> My mind's words. This is like wow. <laughs> okay, called out. All right. Uh, but he he, take, he takes it all in. He says, "Well, if it truly is the Lady of Graves' will, who am I to mess with fate? But at the same time, I must wonder." She does indeed enjoy free will and the way that her children use it. I feel that we may be coaxed into this. How can we be sure? Uh, I don't know if it matters to Tiet, but Odette has no religious symbols on her whatsoever. Um, so you could at least surmise that Odette is not you know, following uh, whatever the hell her name is. What say you? Phrasma. Phrasma. Or actually, he doesn't even know Ramir's name yet. So it would be, what say you, follower of the lady? The minute she started talking to you, Ramir, the fortune teller, you started to feel that quiet, gentle whisper that pushes at the back of your mind that's cold like the fingers of the dead. Go, go and do my will, child. Our Lady Phrasma has indeed blessed our way. And it would be indignant of me not to heed her will. And he just can't, he gets this cold kind of shake. The whisper only says, "Cleanse them in my name, bring me their souls." And at that last bit, he kind of smiles. She has indeed blessed us. If an ancient evil is to rise, then it will be met with my fist. You have my, you have my allegiance. And my daggers. Okay. Okay, guys. <laughs> uh, I must Odette. avenge my brother. You have my axe. You have my sword. <laughs> right. You have yeah, brother. Right. That, right. Uh, Odette nods. Uh, she already knows the Ramir is going to say yes because she mentioned fate. So she's not even going to bother with him. Um, <laughs> and she turns her, she like swivels back to the bar where she can hear Iron Splitter uh, mulling about. Um, and you, good sir. Iron Splitter, it's up to you what you choose, but it's been a really long time since you did anything except looks at rich guy, clean up rich pukey assholes. Ugh. How long uh, would we be away? Long enough to put the adventure in an archive. <laughs> I was I was gonna try to figure out how to work that into my next sentence. Thank you for Thank the you raid. for the raid. Uh, you don't know the answer to that, Odette, but you do know it takes about a week to get there and a week to get back, so at least a month. I would say the winds of fate are sometimes fickle, but you'll be away from home for at least a month. And, uh, you, you, you clearly love your drama, but you don't know more. Your cards don't tell you any more than you need us. And You do have a very reliable uh, assistant who helps you run the bar, does the morning shift normally. Her name's Marge. She's a very large human. <laughs> Marge. <laughs> how, much is it, how many donuts does she sell in a dozen? Thirteen. Fourteen. Wise. Wise. It's a long time ago. You've got to work your way up. No. Anyway, um, my cards are not the ones who showed me what is to come. The sky, the stars, 
they know more than they let on? Well, the more you talk, the more I worry about you. So, yes, I'll go if only to make sure you don't fall ass over tea kettle into the lake out there. That's very generous of you, Mr. Iron Splitter. Just as fine, ma'am. No, it's not. Uh, you, you are just, are you a tavern? Are you a bar house? Are you, are you room and board? We we have, yeah, we've got room and board. We, we're one of the nicer, if quirky establishments. Do you have a stable? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Iron Splitter, if it's all right with you, I'll pay for a room for the night and we can set out in the morning. Hey, that's that's fine with me. Uh, do any of you do anything special for the rest of the night? Uh, Odette does wander back outside to go put her stuff away. Nikolai Wait. will. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Uh, he'll he'll take his uh, found papers to the person who <laughs> needs them. So that would mean you'd go outside. Tiet and Ramir, anything else you're doing, obviously Schist is going to finish the shift. What is it? What does it feel like outside right now? Like, good night, bad night, cool, dark? It's gothic horror game. It's, it's constantly cold fall. That's fair. It's rainy. It gets dark early. Um, it's late October. Ramir is going to go to his room and spend, like he spends most nights, a good couple hours praying to Verasma, asking her guidance, and uh, praying for, what's the right word? passage for the souls that are about to be delivered unto her. That's a good word for it. Passage. Uh, Tiet would stay in the tavern up until the point that Schist would like start to close. Mm-hmm. Eating his stew as slowly as possible. <laughs> it's ice cold by now. It's still good. It, you know, it's God, I want some stew. <laughs> it's congealed. He's, it gets this at, sort of nice thickness to it, and you're like... Yeah. Mm-hmm. At the same point, he is meditating on whatever mantra he has for the day, trying to become more one with the universe. And when they, when when he does close, like the whole talk about this room, he did not understand any of it. So he will pick up his his grass cloak and start to walk outside to go sleep in a stable. Uh, if Odette is back in by this time, uh, she would have slid more coins towards Schist uh, to pay for Tiet's room. Yes. However, before that happens, <clears throat> Nikolai leaves and walks past the stables. So you can tell him what is out oh. there. Okay. Uh, as you walk past the stables, uh, at first glance, uh, you see everything is, is horse sized. Um, but uh, at a better glance, um, you see something, uh, you see like it like rear its head and um, it doesn't have a horse head. It's feathered and has a beak. Buckbeak. <laughs> and uh, if you peeked inside, you would see along its um, its body is folded wings. Do you have a chocobo? 
<laughs> oh man, an ostrich. I have an ostrich. Now uh, she no. does. <laughs> now Nikolai. she does. Nikolai, do you have Arcana at all trained? Um, do I? Let's oh no, you out. have nature. Roll that. Oh boy. <laughs> no, I don't. What'd you get? I got a nine. <laughs> You've heard about these. They're they're a thing that some of the last wall riders use to defend the land. Never seen mm. one this far east though. Can't remember its name. Chocobo? Maybe that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Australian Thunderlegs. <laughs> Wowie. It's not a fucking kangaroo. It Australia. is four legged. It it is four legged. This is a four-legged uh, ostrich with a llama body. Got it. It's four four-legged claws instead of hoofs, and a bird-like head. Um, I wings. will call it a sweat llama. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yes, Chad. It is. This is a hoppy graph. <laughs> well. <laughs> Maybe not quite that, but whatever. It's close enough. Also, the stories you've been told, Nikolai, they're much larger. Maybe it's a baby. Maybe it is a baby. Mm. It is a very um, large baby. When Odette comes back in and uh, Ramir and Nikolai have gone and it's just uh, Iron Spitter and um, Spitter. Split her, whatever. You're your name is going to be whatever comes out of my mouth right now, okay? I love you, Rosie. Um, <laughs> and Tiet. Uh, she sits at the bar, and she finally takes off her scarf. And uh, she is very much not an old woman. Um, and she is very much... Uh, she's completely blind in one eye, and she has heavy scarring over the other. Uh, but she, uh, she looks like a young woman with uh, ice white hair. And then she'll finish the evening uh, at the bar, like ordering some food and then another ale. And then she'll tuck in after uh, she pays for Tiet's room when he tries to scamper off into the stable. And Schist, you can tell us how you close your bar as you reflect on the adventure ahead to close the session. And then, Tiet, you'll have to give us a review of that last day, the, the recap. Before this happens, before Nikolai goes to the paper person, he'll poke his head in the bar and go, Schist, there's a Svetlama outside. And then he'll leave. <laughs> ah, I've never seen one of those. <laughs> no one Thank ever you. should. <laughs> if you no, go out but there... No, now my character... My character will call it a Svet Llama from now on. Oh, That's all Lord. I wanted. <laughs> Although, Schist, if you did go out there, you know exactly what it is. Dwarves know all about those. But you can call it whatever you want. Svet Llama it is. Because I like that. Okay. Uh, so yeah, Schist cleans up. Uh, if there's anyone drunk in a corner, he drags them outside and makes sure that they've paid their tabs, if they have it, he helps himself to just what they owe him and uh, leaves them outside. If it's a particularly cold night, he'll put them in the stable so no one like freezes or gets cold or something like that. Maybe they can cuddle with the Svet Llama. I don't know. No. Um, they but... just need fed. <laughs> Anyways, carry on. Okay, uh, so then he is going to uh, make a note to make sure he talks to Marge in the morning about watching. That's a bad time to freeze. That is a very <laughs> bad time to freeze. Oh. Give me the second to pop loose. Oh, shit, I got a screenshot it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that expression is like half surprised. 
Like, looking at something that shouldn't be surprising, but it is. Caption, first time seeing Svetlama. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, dead. Nope. Okay. No. We, we died. No, didn't. We will Why let her finish die? her outro at the beginning of next session. Oh, I think I just died, too. No? No, no you you're did. here. Oh, okay. However... That is where we'll pause for today. The night closes in and we must retreat to safe shelter to wait out the horrors in the dark until the dawn breaks. There are many other tales of the macabre and heroic on our channel. On Sundays, we have Fiasco followed by Cult Divinity Lost. On Mondays, we play uh, Delta Green followed by Mythos World. On Tuesdays, we have Black Void run by Dwayne. On Wednesdays, we have Octung Cthulhu. On Thursdays before this show, we have Mage the Awakening. On Fridays, we have Masks of Nyarlathotep followed by... Yes, not only. Followed by uh, Scarred Lance 5e on Saturday, a brand new 5e game to come check out, set in a unique homebrew world by a new GM to the show. And then uh, coming soon in about two weeks, two, three weeks on Saturdays following D&D, we're going to have SCP the RPG. We thank you for daring to follow us into the dark and hope you'll join us again next time. If you'd be so kind as to follow on Twitch and subscribe on YouTube, we'd be indebted. Special thanks to our patrons and Twitch subscribers, the superheroes who make our quality better, our cosplay sharper, and help us feed many of the pets. Heroes of Horror, tell the viewers who you are and what dark realms you can be found before next Thursday. Hey, everybody. I've been Nikolai Girek, a.k.a. The Wook. The, not D. Um, and you can find me all over the internet as Am Changeling, because it me, Am Changeling. You can find me playing tomorrow in Scarred Lands. Yeah, that's it. Yes, and much like the aforementioned Changeling, I will be in Scarred Lands uh, tomorrow, Friday, 10 o'clock. Um, and I have been Ramir, although I, and I am otherwise known as J3 Billion. And that's uh, me. Hi, I'm Savannah. You can find me online at Miss Miss Emo Fox. I played Odette the Blue Heron Oracle. Uh, you can find me next on the internet on Saturday. Um, my first ever appearance on Gehenna Gaming for a one shot. Uh, and then following Sunday, Sunday round dose for Cult Divinity Lost uh, for my total bitch of a person, Garnet. You think it's me? Uh, Dwayne. Oh, yeah. I no looked at, yeah, I was like, okay, Rosie's next. Yeah, yes, so I am Dwayne. Uh, yeah, uh, Made of Kimchi is where you can find me on the internet. Tonight I played Tiet, the Dawn Gift. Uh, the next time you guys will see me will be to... Wait, what is today? Today's Thursday, so tomorrow is Friday. I'll be wearing a dress, playing Agatha Merriweather. Yes. Yeah, you look I love it. it. That dress good. And Rosie, we will let you finish your monologue to start next week. But you can let people know who you are. Hi, I am Rosie, regular size mom. You can follow me on Twitter at mom underscore sized. And tonight I have been playing Schist Iron Splitter, a Dorvan fighter brewer. Uh, and you can find me next here, actually on Sunday, playing Cult uh, with the lovely Savannah and several other fantastic people. I believe Ambrose is also in everyone that game John, with yeah. us. Yeah, everyone but John. Totally not John. Oh, and Dwayne! Fine. And Dwayne! Oh, Dwayne. I just, I just think Dwayne should be in everything, so I just, like, insert him. That happened oh once, and it happened once, and it was not good for his sanity. Yeah, too tired. <laughs> yeah. Uh, super not jealous, it's fine. And I, you can also find me in Carrie Comfort Studios doing a few things in October. I will be running Bluebeard's Bride, uh, the Dark Carnival setting, which is from the Book of Mirrors, I with a fantastic it. cast of awesome people. 
uh, and I'm they're the same cast I had when I ran the core set, and I can't believe they agreed to let me torture them all again. Uh, awesome. But they are returning to Carrying Covered Studios on uh, October 6th to explore the Dark Carnival. And then on October 23rd, you can watch the start of the Cyberpunk game over on Carrying Covered Studios, which is run by Twin Dad, Dave K, who I believe is appearing in some things over here on Vorpal Tales. Something to do with Narlothotep. I haven't caught up yet. He's awesome. Uh, also keep an eye on Martlet Games. We're recording some things that will be dropping in October, like a anthology on... an anthology of a sci-fi based 10 Candles game. We will be proposing table truths at the end of each game to screw over future players. I'm in the first group. So everyone after me is totally screwed, I promise. And we're also recording Psychopops Incorporated, which is a all Hakata game, uh, hashtag Hurkata, because I can't resist a pun. Uh, so check out Martlet Games, keep an eye on Karen Cumber Studios and keep watching Vorpal Tales. And I am Tyler, Elder Jack goes online. I'm all over the place here. You can find me next running cult on Sunday. Let's see who we can drive mad and kill. And now, for the ride or die viewers, it's vote time. Viewers, you can vote for any one player each session. Your vote is advantage on a single roll. Players, your votes are worth your award recipient's choice of one replenished, replenished spell slot, one replenished focus point, or one hit dice worth of HP. Begin. Man. Um. Crap. Want to vote for everybody? It's so hard to decide right now. Not allowed. Okay, well, since we have two people who look amazing in cosplay right now, I'm not going to give Three. it to either of them. You yeah, but I can't vote yourself, for myself. <laughs> I can't vote for myself. You also didn't include yourself, okay? Yeah. Gotta include yourself. It's fine. It's great. You look good. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to Dwayne for playing the drunk guy because that was fun. So good. It was so good. Thanks. <laughs> I just realized that was P for talking. Well, way to destabilize me. Okay. Uh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Dwayne did a great job tonight. Not gonna lie. Um. I gotta give mine to Nikolai for just straight up just yanking the gold. Well, a second has I know that I, I know that's kind of why you were there, but it was great. And Ramir's like, R Ramir probably is like, yeah, I kind of know, but I didn't see it, so whatever. <laughs> it's like there was only one other person there, so what? Well, like that? That was really good. I enjoyed that because. The drunk guy afterwards was just like, what the fuck's going on? Oh, that makes it my turn. <laughs> ah, such hard choices. Uh, I'm gonna get my vote to Rosie. Mostly for the beard, because that is some straight up fucking commitment. Um, but also, um, I enjoyed, um, one, your first name, two, uh, <laughs> Shit the dwarf. <laughs> yeah, uh, two, uh, your, your interactions, um, of just tootling around with your bar and, like, people being, you know, horrible. Got to take out the trash tonight. I, li I love that moment. It's great. Right? Oh, it's me. <laughs> it is you. You guys, I'm like, go, Amber. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hmm. I was stuck between two people as well this evening. However, uh, I feel that I vote for one more often than the other, so the other is it's gonna get it. I will give this to this person for not only their name. But for the beard and the beard beads. 
Yes. Something please. that I no longer have. <laughs> no, you do not. Uh, I really maybe in nine get... months. The rosy it is all for you. I really need to get some some of those things. Thank you. Yes, and there will be more beads in my beard next week. Uh, but they're they're still in the mail. So at least watch us next week for that. See what I do yeah. with my beard. That's worth it. I'm gonna do more uh, makeup next week too. So yeah. watch out for that. Uh, and let's see. I want to vote for uh, Savannah because oh. you you were just. I appreciate that you were half blind the entire time. I am half blind the entire time. I can't see out of this eye. Uh, like, at all. Like, it's not like, one of those, like, mesh contacts. No, fuck. Yeah, it's no, blind. No, I've played with a eye patch, and it's just... It's very discombobulating. It is, like... So, a, it is. applause. Thank you. should also mention that entire this is why you've all come together was getting thrown at her on the fly as we went. There was no Free knowledge of that. No. Kudos. Yeah. Damn. He's just like, this is what you know, and this is like the vision that you got. I'm like, okay, thanks. Here I go. It's fine. As, as always, excellent being excellent to each other. Come back and find us next Thursday, same time, same place, for more shitty dwarves and awesome adventures. Till then, good night.